Yes, Kayla's one of the x-ray students at uh, Chateau, and I've been inviting her to church. Her dad is also a pastor in Ackworth, Cartersville. And so I have to ask her that every time she comes to... Where, how long does it take you to get here? Where are you from? How old are you? Anyway, so Kayla brought her boyfriend, Brian, who's going to sing special music later. Right, Brian? Okay, good. And her sister and her friend and her mom and dad. Let's give them a hand this morning. Now you can sit down. Anybody else first time here or first time in a long time? Well, happy 4th of July. Let's, uh, I'm going to pray and then we'll fellowship together uh, for a moment and then we'll have our offering. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this beautiful Sabbath that you've given us, Lord. Thank you for the freedoms that we have to uh, just come to church this morning and worship. We pray, Lord, that you'll bless this service and that you'll get glory through everything that we do and say, pray that you'll be with the, the music and the, the worship team and the audiovisual people and everything that everybody that has a part in this service, Lord, you just get glory through all of it. And uh, Lord, help us to keep our mind on you and the reason that we came today is to glorify your name. In Christ's name we pray. thankful that the country that we live in today allows us to assemble in these places this morning. So we're going to sing a little bit about that. And I know you've probably heard this. It may have been since Bible school years ago or maybe in the classroom. I don't know. But we're going to sing this together. So if you know it, please sing out loud. America the Beautiful. Oh, beautiful for oh, spacious skies for amber waves of rain for purple mountain majesties above the fruited plain Amen
made he he responds to the question he asked I fight and you may die run and you'll live at least for a while and dying in your beds many years from now you'll be willing to trade all the days from this day to that for just one chance to come back here and tell our enemies that they may take our lives but they'll never take our freedom what will you do with your freedom today? That's the questions we need to ask ourselves on this uh, July 4th weekend. And we should give thanks today to the one that bestowed us the ultimate, the ultimate freedom. And all of our freedoms upon us. It's a tragic mistake when we separate God from our freedom. Without God, our concept of freedom can easily degenerate into selfishness. Wise men have always known that with real freedom, true liberty, real freedom comes responsibility. He asked the right question. What will you do with your freedom? We naturally think of our nation's freedom this weekend on July 4th and we should, that's the great legacy that our founding fathers have left us. And we live in a land that is blessed with freedom. Few nations have ever known such liberties as the United States of America. Today, hearing this sanctuary in Hayesville, North Carolina, we're free to worship. We're free to carry our Bibles in. A free press informs us about our world. We choose where we live and we choose what we do to make a living. We select our leaders from mayor to president. Many people around the world dream of such freedom. We celebrate July 4th because on that day our nation's founders signed the Declaration of Independence in 1776. America is 240 years old tomorrow. Many call that document our country's birth certificate. Do you remember its opening words from your social studies class? When in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people to, dis to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation and it goes on to say and you remember this part we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights that among these are life liberty and the pursuit of happiness open your Bibles to Galatians chapter 5 if you will Galatians chapter 5 
I'm going to begin in the 13th verse. This is a letter that, that Paul wrote to the Galatians. And the Galatians had known about salvation and they had known about the freedoms of salvation and the freedom in Christ. But they were getting uh, caught up in this thing called works. And they thought, you know, the more you did, the better off you were. And so Paul wrote this letter and he was kind of discouraged, kind of a little bit disappointed in the people at Galatia. And he wanted to remind them that their freedom is alone in Christ. That they, don't, they can't do anything to gain freedom. They can't do anything to gain salvation. And I'll talk about that in a moment. Galatians 5.13, stand with me when you get there. It says in verse 13, For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For all is law. All the law is fulfilled in one word. Even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you be consumed by one another. I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against there is no law. Look back up with me, verse 13. For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh. We're free and we have freedoms, but, but freedom is not a, a, a license to sin. Use it, do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. I want to speak to you this morning on this, this subject, freedom in Christ. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you so much for uh, giving us this opportunity again, Lord, to, to preach your word and proclaim your gospel. Lord, I pray that, that you will touch hearts here today, Lord, and, and that you will just shoot arrows right where they need to be, God. You, you get all the glory for what's accomplished here today, Lord. Use me this morning, Lord, but move me to the background, and you move to the forefront that people can see you, see your glory, see your grace, see your mercy, see everything that you have given us is free. And we thank you for that in Christ's name. Amen. You can be seated. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Listen to this. A synonym for liberty is freedom. They mean the same thing, freedom and liberty. They mean independence, ability, opportunity, power, privilege, and right. Freedom is something that we as Christians know something about. We were born in sin, but Jesus tells us that we can be set free. And he goes on to tell us that if the Son sets you free, Son, capital S-O-N, if the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. Paul writes to the Galatians to remind them of their liberties. What you may not realize is that Paul is pretty upset when he's writing this letter. The people of Galatia knew that it was by grace alone 
Grace alone that they were saved. But some of them have, have turned from that grace and were teaching that works were better than grace. Let me ask you this question. To those people that think that there's any other way to heaven other than the free gift of grace, and after that grace has been given to you, you have accepted it. The only thing you need to do now is try to live the best life you can for Jesus. But people that think that they can do, do something to get saved, or they can get saved by doing some kind of works, let me ask you, how much do you have to do? Who makes that, who makes that point that, that you've got to this point and now you're saved? My friends, who sets the amount of works we have to do be, it can't be by works. And, and Paul told these Galatians over and over and over. It's grace plus what? Nothing. Grace plus nothing. And once you have it, you are free. You are free. Some of us don't live like we're free. Some of us live like we're slaves. We come into church with our heads hung down and, and we're just, it's pitiful to watch some of you. And then you come in and, and you try to put that smile on and you try to act like, okay, it's Sunday morning now, kids. We've got to act straight. I see you sometimes when you get out of the car. It's hilarious. My wife and I don't ride to church together. We've never had a fight on the way to church because we ride in two separate cars. If you're obedient and surrendered to a life led by the Holy Spirit, you are truly living in the freedom and the abundant life that, that Christ wants for you. But if you're still living, listen now, if you're still living the common, adequate Christian life and haven't really allowed the Holy Spirit to work in you and through you, listen, you're not living the life that Christ has for you. He's got so much more when you're obedient and when you let Him work in your life, when the Holy Spirit comes into your heart, you remember that day how excited you were. And how much, uh, I, I remember I called my grandmother and I told her and I was so excited I wanted to call everybody in the family and tell them that I got saved. And if you were here a couple Sunday go, uh, Sundays ago when, when Maddie Muston said with a big smile on her face that her mom and dad wouldn't take anything for her, I got saved. She was excited. Do you remember that? We can be that excited today. 20, 30, 40 years later, some of you have been saved for 50 years, but we act like we're not free. If you're still living that common, adequate Christian life, God has more for you than you know. Now, because we're free... Because we have freedoms, because we have liberties, there are things that we must realize. At the introduction, I told you that wise men know that true freedom brings about responsibility. What are we responsible for? Well, it depends. It depends on if we live by our flesh or if we live by the Spirit, what we're responsible for. Now, I realize this morning that I'm not preaching to a bunch of murderers. And I'm not preaching to a bunch of people that worship idols. At least I hope not. But the variety of, of examples living by the flesh in today's world. Living by the flesh in today's world. What does that mean? Some of these things, living by the flesh, have become acceptable to Christians. What are you talking about, preacher? Preacher. For one thing, I have never seen a time, forgive me, you dads, where people are more worried about the position that their child plays on a team than they are worried about the condition of their heart. Amen. We want to cover up our outside the best way we can. And our inside is wrong. Because 
It's been so long since we got down on our knees and prayed and talked and had a conversation with the one who created us, with the one who gave us freedom. We're worried about everything else in the world but our inside. Not only that, and I'm not trying to get ugly here. Listen, I'm just stating the facts. Our flesh is out of control in America. We have the freedoms to choose what we want, but most of us are a slave to our flesh. We have decided, and it has become acceptable in the United States. Look at other countries. Not to eat what, what's healthy, but to eat what tastes good. Not just some of the time, but all the time. There are so many, and I'm not trying to get ugly, I'm just telling you the truth. There are so many obese people in our country. If you don't believe me, go to the beach. And they don't try to cover it up either. It's a sin, and it's become accepted. It's become accepted to indulge, not only in food, but in anything that makes you have that temporary, that temporary satisfaction. That, that whatever that, that temptation is, I'm just going to take it. Well, I deserve it. I've worked hard, and, and I deserve it. It's a sin, and, and we live by our flesh. I was told this past week by another pastor that I have the freedom to choose. That means how I look, how I feel, what I eat, how I dress. I have those freedoms. What I do with those freedoms is my decision. It's my decision. We have the freedom. You have the freedom. What will you do with your freedom. We are free in this country and we are free in Christ too. Another freedom of our flesh that, that we've, we've misused in, in America that God gives us, but our flesh and Americans misuse this, is our God-given sexuality. Oh my. We were created by God. God and we were created for God. We cannot give in to the temptations that our enemy, that our enemy tries to make look so enticing to us. My friend Jimmy Russell, how many of you know, know Jimmy Russell? He'd say it like this. Plain talk is easy understood. Let me make this as plain as I can our God-given sexuality. If you are sleeping with anyone that you have not married, you are committing a sin against yourself and against God. Plain talk is easy understood. The Bible bluntly says in 1 Corinthians 6, 18 through 20, flee from sexual immorality. This includes any kind of sexual activity apart from marriage. Listen to this. Every sin that a man does outside his body, but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? Your own. For you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. And there's another scripture there's a, that the Bible warns. There is a way that seems right to man, seems right to our flesh, but in the end leads to death. Proverbs 14, 12. The Bible also promises, Blessed are those whose ways are blameless. Psalms 119, 1. The good news is, if you've committed any of these sins, and we have, and I have, the good news is He will forgive you. And you can, exp you can experience spiritual freedom and freedom like you've never known it before in Christ Jesus. 
spiritual freedom from that temptation. But you've got to do your part. You've got to ask Him to help you to live by the Spirit and not by the flesh. Paul wrote this too in Romans 7, 18. And this is us. This is all of us. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. For the will is present with me, but how to perform what is good I do not find. We have to ask Him to help us because we can't do it on our own. We can, we can try all we want to, but we can't do it on our own without God. We make, remember, we make a tragic mistake when we separate God from our freedom. We have freedoms. What will you do with your freedom? In New York Harbor stands the Statue of Liberty, a copper statue designed by Frederick Auguste Bartholdi a French sculptor, and built by Gustave Eiffel. It was a gift to the United States from the people of France in 1886. The statue is of a robed female figure representing the Roman goddess Libertas, who bears a torch and a tablet evoking the law. Upon the tablet is inscribed the date of the American Declaration of Independence, July 4, 1776. A broken chain lies at her feet. The statue is an icon of the freedom of the United States. It's an icon of the freedom that we have in the United States. A welcoming sight to immigrants arriving from abroad. Let me ask you a question. Wouldn't you like to be able to hold up your name, your testimony, your light, for God, like the statue have, of liberty has done for so many years. With the help of God, you can. Okay, we've talked about the freedom of the flesh. Let's talk about the freedom of the Spirit for a moment. Things that we would want to hold up, like the torch in New York Harbor. There are fruits of the Spirit that Paul mentions to the Galatians at the end of this chapter, verse 22 and 23, that they are free to choose these things instead of the fleshly things that he mentioned before. There's nine of them. There's nine of them. Say them with me. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Self-control. Dr. Charles Stanley tells a story about writing about the fruits of the Spirit. He's going to write a book on the fruits of the Spirit and he gets to kindness and he's doing all this research and he gets to kindness and he realizes, you know, I wasn't so kind the other day and I should have been more kind with my words or my actions to that person. And he said, I just stopped and I started praying, Lord, I want to be more kind. And then he said, I go on and get down to gentleness and he says... I realized that I hadn't been too gentle with my words with somebody on the staff. And, and he said, I realized that I just needed to stop and, and pray again. I need to be more gentle. And he said right in the middle of the prayer, he said, I noticed that it was me talking about myself. He said, I need to be more kind. I need to be, I need to be, I, I, I. And he said, do you understand the problem is I can't do anything right apart from God. I can't do anything right. That's when he realized, he said, I cannot produce fruit. I am only the bearer. He produces the fruit. I'm only the bearer. The Holy Spirit is the producer and we are merely the fruit bears. Lord, help us. Lord, help us to bear the right kinds of fruit. Fruits of the Spirit. We will hold up the light if you will light it once again in our lives. If we will hold up the light for God, our name, our testimony, 
our place in the earth. We'll hold it up if He will light it again in our life. All those things that we've been doing wrong, all those things that we've been doing in the flesh, we can get forgiveness of that. Our, our slate can be wiped clean and we can hold up the light again. But He is the one that lights the torch. He's the one that puts the light in us. It's only then that we'll experience the freedom that He wants to give us. What will you do with your freedom? Now, I gave you some synonyms for freedom and liberty at the beginning of the message. They mean independence, ability, opportunity, privilege, power, and rights. Let me give you some antonyms for freedom and liberty. And then you choose how you want to live. Restraint, dependence, denial, imprisonment, slavery. What sin are you struggling with in your flesh? You can have freedom today. Nobody's going to make fun of you if you come forward and pray. Nobody's going to laugh at you because let me tell you something. We all, we, I'm included in this sentence, have our own struggles. Every one of us. Every one of us. And we can be set free of whatever it is. As they get a song ready for our invitation, do you want to just continue to be an adequate, common everyday Christian? Or do you want that true freedom, that liberty that God promises us and God gives us and He'll rekindle that flame inside of you? What about your children? Do you pray, pray for them that, that they'll be able to hold their light up, that they'll be able to shine their light all the days of their life, that they'll bear good fruit because no matter how hard we try, listen, there comes a point when we're not responsible for them anymore. And they make their own decisions. And God, help them. Help my boys to make decisions. What about your grandchildren? You may want to come and pray for them or some member of your family or some, somebody that you work with that, that needs to be Free. But let me tell you this, if you've never experienced freedom in, in the salvation of Christ first and foremost, let me introduce you to Jesus today as we stand and as we pray. Father God, we thank you for this scripture. We thank you for this letter that Paul wrote to the Galatians and how it speaks to us today and how we can determine in our mind to live in the Spirit and not by the flesh. But Lord, we can't do it apart from You. God, I pray You breathe on this congregation. And Lord, You forgive us where we failed You. And Lord, rekindle the light and the flame inside each of us that we can hold it up for others to see that we're different, we're called, we're set apart, we're a peculiar people. And it's because You live inside us and we want to bear good fruit we want to do something good with the freedom that you give us in Christ's name